this webinar is being put on by the Empire State Library Network. Um, it is on Wikipedia for libraries with collections in New York heritage. Um, so hopefully you are all in the right place and, and that's what you're expecting to see right now. Uh, my name is Ryan Perry. I'm the digital collections librarian for the Central New York Library Resources Council. And I also serve as the statewide project coordinator for New York Heritage Digital Collections. Today's event is part of a pilot project that I'm working on with Heidi Zemer from the Western New York Library Resources Council, Courtney Gearhart from the Niagara Falls Public Library, and Kara Conley from the Community Library of DeWitt and Jamesville. So um, you'll see them in, in, in the chat as well. Um, we, are, we are working to promote your content from ESLN's um, various digital repositories and expand public understanding and appreciation of New York State's history and culture. So um, we really, really believe that the best way to do this is to meet our users where they are. And one of the places they are is Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is a remarkable resource that has helped millions of users research a dizzying array of topics. Our hope is that we can find ways to expand the reach of our materials while further enriching this invaluable resource. Um, with that, I'm really excited to introduce Lane Raspberry. Lane Raspberry is Wikimedia in residence at the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia. In this role, Lane specializes in sharing information in ways that make it free and accessible to all. Um, and with that, Lane, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Ryan, for the introduction. Thanks for having me. Thanks for Winnie Lark for having me uh, five years ago, one of my one of my earlier Wikipedia presentations to libraries. I've been doing this for a while. So uh, I am at the uh, School of Data Science at the University of Virginia these days. Uh, previously, I was living in beautiful New York at Consumer Reports doing Wikipedia for them. I've been doing Wikipedia in, professionally with organizations for about 10 years now. And I've been editing Wikipedia as a hobby since I was an undergraduate. This was in, in the mid 2000s. So uh, free and open information means a lot to me. Access to information means a lot to me. When I was young and needed to go to the library, I had to bicycle a long way to get there. And it's always been my wish that more people have easier and ready access to library resources. Uh, as I give my presentation, so I'm going to cover some things that many people in libraries have asked me in the past. If you'd like to ask questions, just put them in the chat. I, I would be happy to stop during my presentation and explain anything. Please don't be shy, but uh, I'm gonna continue with the presentation until and unless I get questions. And let's try to have some conversation today about Wikipedia. Anything you ever wanted to ask, uh, nothing's out of bounds. And Lane, before you get started, there's a couple of housekeeping points that I forgot to mention. Please. Um, this is being recorded for, uh, for future reference, so you'll, we'll have it up afterwards. And there are also closed captionings, um, live transcript available. Um, if you click down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see an option for live transcript. Also, um, as Lane mentioned, please try to use the Q&A module to ask questions. It just makes it a little bit easier for us to keep track of, of your questions and ask Lane um, as, as they come in. So thank you so much. All right. Thanks, guys. So <clears throat> my my presentation's online. You can find me at the University of Virginia. Uh, these slides are going to be available. So it's, it's all there for you. And parts of this are interactive, which is why I'm telling you about the slides. If you want to follow up with this presentation by clicking any of the links, that's going to be possible. In this talk, I'm going to give an introduction to Wikipedia, what it is, and why it matters. I'm going to say something about what organizations do on Wikipedia. And then I'm going to talk particularly about Wikipedia and libraries and Wikipedia and, and my library at the University of Virginia. So introduction of Wikipedia, what is it? Well, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. This is how the community defines itself. There's a lot of fans in the Wikipedia editorial community about access to information and reference information and what it means. And the definition that we've gathered around is that an encyclopedia is a summary of what sources are already published. Now, I know some people have other concepts of, of what an encyclopedia is, maybe containing some original research or some essays by subject matter experts who are giving new perspectives on topics. But in Wikipedia, we're very big on fact checking and quality control. So we use this definition of an encyclopedia, which is tied to how we maintain the quality of Wikipedia, which is 
if anybody shares information in Wikipedia, then following that claim, that fact, that statement, they should cite the source from which the information came. And this is what we say in encyclopedias. Uh, if somebody's citing a source, sources have to be reliable. We in the community, we make these judgments about what constitutes reliability. Uh, when we do this, we, we're really looking to what's most familiar to most of our editors, which is the undergraduate <laughs> library experience at Western University. So if a typical university librarian would say a source is reliable, then we've tried to import that culture into the wiki community. We've, we've often looked to librarians to come to terms with what our quality standards should be. I'm just starting with this. So Wikipedia system of quality control, that's not really what I wanna talk about today. It's, it's very well documented in, in scholarly critiques in the academic literature. You can see what different people have said about this, but I wanna say what, what, why an institution, why a university, why a library should care about Wikipedia. And that's because Wikipedia is extremely popular. It seems to be the case that for many topics, Wikipedia is the most requested, published, accessed, and consulted source of information on the internet, perhaps in the world on that topic. And there's a very simple explanation for that. Wikipedia was established in 2001. In that very same year, 2001, a large company in the search engine business, Google, made the decision that if there was a Wikipedia article for a given topic, then if somebody were to search for that topic in their search engine, then they would put the Wikipedia article at the top of the search results. And it's not just one search engine that did that. Microsoft's Bing does that. Nowadays, if you ask Apple Siri a question or Amazon Alexa a question, in response to search in general, DuckDuckGo, wh whatever you want to use, so many search engines include Wikipedia in the results and it, it's, it's highly ranked, the Wikipedia articles. So many people use Wikipedia. Many people who use Wikipedia don't even know they're using Wikipedia, you know, de depending how, on how familiar they are with the internet. They're just using a search engine, and then the search engine directs them to the Wikipedia article if one seems to seems to apply. Now, professionally, if there's a, a staff Wikipedian somewhere, this is usually what that person is engaged to do. In the same way that organizations, uh, they, they come up with a communication strategy. That communication strategy can include setting up a website, driving traffic to the, to the website, counting how many people read it, or it can include um, having a social media profile and collecting tweets or collecting Facebook, Facebook likes and counting those up. And the idea is that the messages that get the more user engagement, those are the more valuable and these demonstrate something called communication impact which you measure with social media metrics or, or communication metrics. And in that same way, if somebody posts something on Wikipedia, there's metrics that we can get which demonstrate audience engagement and response and delivery of information to people who actually want it. And in this way, Wikipedia can be a measurable part of a communication strategy. That is, you put your information into Wikipedia and then the people who read that are people who just a few seconds ago requested information on that very topic in a search engine. So Wikipedia's audience is the people who just now are looking for information on a particular topic. And if your information is in that Wikipedia article, then you've, you've served the consumer need. Now, Wikipedia activities. I'm gonna describe what it is that, that I do, what wiki editors do, most of whom are volunteers. There's very few professionals. I happen to be at a university, that's, that's very uncommon. Uh, but if there's, if there's a Wikipedia, there's motivations as individuals and there's motivations as organizations. I'm not going to talk so much about individuals today unless you ask, but if you were to ask individual Wikipedia editors, the, the several hundred thousand volunteers, why it is that they're contributing to Wikipedia, they would say that they enjoy it. That's a, that's a very, very common sentiment. If they weren't enjoying what they were doing on Wikipedia, they wouldn't be volunteering their time there. But going past that very quickly, there's some kind of activist motivation. People who contribute to Wikipedia, they think that they're delivering educational information or useful information or fan-based information, whatever. They're, they're serving a need. They're delivering information to people who want it. So that, that's part of the motivation. And then 
if, if you talk long enough to Wikipedia editors, eventually they'll talk about the philosophy of editing. They'll say people have a fundamental right to information or people should be able to engage in peer-to-peer -peer communities or something about nonprofit networks. These, these kind of ideas come up. Uh, in, in Wikipedia, the, the kind of things that people do, uh, we can talk about this if you like, but just briefly, the easiest way to explain it is that if you can imagine there's a magazine and then there's a, a publishing house and there's all these functions that people have to do. You have to have, you, you, you have, to have a journalist go out and do interviews and then they come back and copy edit it. Somebody's got to fact check things. It's got to go under editorial review to combine with other stories. You need somebody to manage multimedia for illustrations in the articles. Uh, you need to have a, a publishing plan where people prioritize certain content over other content. There's HR departments, there's dispute resolution, there's outreach to make sure that if you have something in the production queue that's not getting done, you get somebody to fulfill those roles. Uh, Wikipedia does all these things and it does all this with volunteers. It's really an army of administrators. It's not just the content creators. And if I had to break down the activities in Wikipedia into three groups that are, that are kind of easy, easy to understand and easy to talk about, there's the one group that's the content creators. This is what most people think of Wikipedia editors, the people writing the articles. There's another group doing some kind of administration, uh, which, which can be the, the, the copy editing or the recruit, recruiting people to, to do certain tasks. And then there's the, the technological development, which is kind of abstract. It can be abstract administration or abstract content creation, usually with software, sometimes with data sets, but doing something technical to try to, to make it all scale. And the technical people may, may or may not work closely with administration or content creation, but generally they're supporting one or both of those in some way. I'm gonna put this aside right now. If you have questions, we'll come back to individual editors, but I, I know you guys are associated with cultural institutions. And that's really what I want to talk about today. So what do cultural institutions do on Wikipedia? What does any kind of organization do on Wikipedia? Four classes of activities that I'm going to go over. Okay, the first class of activity is what I've already described to you, and what I think is Wikipedia's greatest strength and why people should really care about Wikipedia. It's that Wikipedia reaches an extremely large audience. The metrics reports inside Wikipedia say that it reaches an audience of about 500 million people a month, about a billion unique devices every month, and over the course of a year, a billion people. So the, there's, there's different metrics reports published by the Wikimedia Foundation and other people. You can check on those yourself and, and maybe there's some dispute. Maybe it's off by a couple of hundred million, but for most people, it's enough to say Wikipedia is reaching a very large audience on a global scale. And this is unprecedented, nearly unfathomable, free and easy access to huge audiences, just so long as you're willing to comply with Wikipedia's ethics and values. And by, by ethics and values, there's, I, I just mean share information in the public interest, share general, in, general interest information that serves the, the user. That, that's, what, that's what we're after, educational information, news information, cultural information. It, it's gotta be in the benefit of the reader. That's the kind of values I'm talking, talking about. And so if you're at a library, if you're at a cultural institution, you're already doing that. When I share information in Wikipedia, I, I, I do it to support researchers and students at my university. Uh, this can be in all kinds of fields. I, support a lot of different classes. In, in, in some ways, this is kind of an administration or support staff role. I also get different grant funding from time to time that, that I apply for. And I'm speaking for myself. I've been editing Wikipedia's medical information for a long time. And when I've been able to get funding most easily, it's, it's for sharing and developing medical information on Wikipedia. I'm just giving this, this data visualization as an example. Uh, what this is, is a chart showing uh, every day of a year, and actually you can show multiple years or whatever arbitrary time range you want. So you can show any, any set of days and then how much traffic, how many page views did that Wikipedia article get for, for any day or any set of days over a range of time. This is for the, the English Wikipedia article on tuberculosis. 
And so when I've had public health messages from expert health organizations to share, and I've put them into this Wikipedia article, then I can say, well, I, I spent this amount of time developing this with these expert sources, these latest publications, these, these key messages. And we reached, we reached 2 million people who right before they arrived at this Wikipedia article, they had just searched for tuberculosis in a search engine. So that's the audience we were able to reach. And I can pull these reports up for every single article in Wikipedia on, on any day going back years and in any language in the world. Wikipedia is not any language in the world, but Wikipedia supports about a thousand languages and it's got active communities for about 300 of those. So we've got, we've got good language coverage. You can do translation in Wikipedia if that's important to you. Uh, you can play this game with any, any article. So whatever your expertise is, you drop a category into this metrics tool and it will generate a report. How many people are reading these articles? And you can find out which articles are the most popular. How many people would you reach if you were sharing such and such kind of information? These kind of, these kind of things are possible. Now, the second thing that organizations do on Wikipedia, and this, this may be related to wanting to get page views also, uh, is, is archiving, or it could be independent. It's not necessarily related. So archiving just means integrating uh, non-text media files into the Wikipedia ecosystem. Some of the non-text non media files that I'm thinking of, so we could actually be talking about text documents, just so long as they're in an independent file. Wikipedia also does document archiving through a project called Wikisource, where people, people convert these, uh, convert handwritten documents into, into machine-readable text or just uh, in, store, store documents of any sort. There's also a picture repository, Wikimedia Commons. We can take images of all sorts, uh, integrate those into Wikipedia articles, store, store them in different ways. Uh, increasingly, non-text non media includes structured data sets. We're able to, to take those also. I can tell you a lot about these kind of archi archival projects. Just briefly, I'm going to give some examples. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, they have a lot of public domain artworks, and they give 300,000 images uh, they, they made them available. We, we imported them all into Wikimedia Commons, started integrating these into Wikipedia articles. So th that was that that's an archival collection. Uh, welcome, the Welcome Trust, the, the big um, pharma nonprofit based in the UK. They gave us a collection of a lot of history of medicine content. And in particular, they had HIV and AIDS educational posters from the 80s and early 90s. So we, we were able to integrate these into different Wikipedia articles about the history of HIV per country. And that's an archival collection. In Philadelphia Science History Institute, they had an alchemy collection, books from centuries ago. We did different things with these. There's large numbers of photographers, people whose hobby is ph photography. These aren't necessarily institutions. These are usually single ph photographers. They may, may have years or a lifetime of photography collections. I'm sharing here this Venemo video game library museum. It was just an individual photographer who liked fo photographing video game hardware, not the video games themselves, but the hardware. He uploaded these into Wikipedia and that's, that's his own personal archive. So we have a lot of individual photographers doing these kinds of things. Okay. I have a really quick question for you, Lane. Yes, um, please. Uh, it, it, with those um, archival collections, um, just like off this off the top of your head, is a good portion of them referred back to by articles, or a lot of those are are there large collections that are just kind of sitting there in Wikimedia Commons or in Wikisource? Do you have a sense for like what what percentage is is being um, referenced by other places? It, it largely depends on the community engagement around the project. So we've seen time and time again, if somebody drops a very interesting collection into Wikipedia and they say, this isn't sorted, you guys just sort this out, then we're not able to recruit the labor to go through and sort all of everybody's collection. So when actually when Welcome dropped their, their history of medicine collection into us, they gave us a bunch of stuff from the 1800s and 1900s, and while interesting, we just didn't know what it was. They didn't have appropriate metadata for us. But what our community really could pick up on was this, we, we have a large LGBT activist community in Wikipedia, 
and the welcome didn't even have, I, I said they gave us a, a collection of HIV posters. Actually, they didn't. They had HIV posters mixed up with a bunch of their other stuff, and we curated that as a collection of interest to us. So that wasn't anything that they've they've ever profiled themselves. It was just based on our interest. This is this is what our community wanted to do with the content that they gave us. So I would say, for example, the welcome collection. It was a it was a huge number of images, maybe almost a million. Mm. I would say, if I had to guess, I would say five percent of them got got well curated. Probably only one to two percent of them actually made it into Wikipedia articles. And then our communities at capacity, we're sorting so much other stuff without it. When we get an expert to come in and help us sort it, maybe that that brings enthusiasm. That's so seeking seeking community. This third thing that I have here, that's that's another thing that organizations may want to do. So if they bring in a subject matter expert and say, let's let's have a social event, let's have a party and we're going to go through media archives and do something with them. That's one of the ways by means of which we convert archival collections into uh, views, because if you build a community around a concept and you start curating the stuff and you have good structured data, then we, we, we eventually get the stuff into, into Wikipedia or get it into, into broader use, whatever that means. Now, I, I told you about communication metrics. So you can count the number of uploads in the archives, but just because they're in the archives, that doesn't mean they get integrated into the Wikipedia articles. Anybody can edit, but somebody's got to do the work to say, this, this media collection would be good for this article, or this is how we're going to distribute such and such. Uh, and, in, in, and until and unless you do that, you're just not going to get, get many views on it. If you, if you host an event around a theme, so the Met Museum would do this. They would say, we're going to focus on this artist or this style of art. And then people would go through their collections, and then integrate developed Wikipedia articles on time, time periods or countries or regions or whatever else the case may be. We have ways of providing, uh, calculating metrics of for any arbitrary cohort of Wikipedians, to what extent are they engaged in Wikipedia and editing and how many people are they reaching? So I'm at a, I'm at a university, uh, certainly libraries host events, certainly museums host an events, but most Wikipedia events, they're actually classes at universities. It means a group of students under the direction of a professor, each student edits a Wikipedia article and the professor is able to watch through digital observation what it is that the students are doing. So we had this class. It was to teach students what is a reliable source, how do you trust what's on the internet. Uh, so a professor, it, it was like a research for, for undergraduates, introduction to research. They, they brought the students to the library and the librarian said, you guys are gonna pick the most controversial topic you can think of and then go into Wikipedia and try to edit it and see, see what it's like to have conflicting sources and reconcile what's reliable and what's less reliable. Whatever the case may be, here's the report that it generated. So we had 17 students who had never edited Wikipedia before. They uh, each, they, they edited 21 Wikipedia articles. They were told to edit one. Some of them picked up some, some other ones made 400 edits to those articles, adding 16,000 words. So easy to count. They cited 190 sources. Many of those are repeated because Wikipedia asked for a citation after every sentence. It's pretty citation heavy. So if it's 190 references, it's, it's probably about 190 sources, something like that. And then since the time the students have, have edited those articles, they've been viewed 600,000 times. And this is, this is that communication impact that I was telling you about earlier. So you can, if, if you put a certain amount of time into Facebook, you get a certain number of views. If you put in a certain amount of time in Twitter, your website, you get views. Wikipedia generates views also. So this is what beginners are able to do. Uh, and this, is, this all gets vetted through Wikipedia's quality control process, of course. Everything in Wikipedia is live. No one can get away. It's all, it's all checked. The last thing that- uh, Lane, yes, yes. there was one, one question that came in through our Q&A. Yes, please, um, please. Are archive collections not available to the public until wiki staff can sort, et cetera? So basically, um, those large uh, archive collections, with, are those as soon as they're up available to the public, or do they need to be sorted before they can be made available? We can do curation and we, so there's, there's, we do in indexing of non public information. So, for example, uh, we have systems where we can say this information isn't public, but here's a link to go to an archive. And you'll get a certain number, a certain number of page views for that. So it's not like it's a complete dead end. 
most of the engagement is around um, articles, the, the multimedia and the articles. So when we have something like, supposing you have an artist and they they have 10 pictures, the one that gets the most engagement is the one that's that's actually displayed in Wikipedia. The ones that get a little more engagement are the ones that we have copies of in our archives. And then it takes a special kind of person that's going to click through to the original organization and engage with the content on the website. We we have right. metrics for, for, for all the all these kinds of engagement, but the thing that people can access on their phone, that tends to be what gets the most engagement. So in other words, the the materials are available. It just they aren't surfaced in a way that most typical users would would access them. So when you were saying that a small, only like a couple percent of those posters were available in articles or referenced elsewhere. It's not that they couldn't get to the other 98% of them. It's just that they were probably unlikely to find them. Is that uh, accurate? It just, it's, it, it's more like the, bar the barrier to access. If you ask people to take, every time you ask someone to take another 15 seconds, you lose a, you lose a certain percentage of people. And how many times are you going to tell people do, do this for 15 more seconds, 15 more seconds? How many, how many clicks does it take to get where you're going? So if you're, if you're wanting to target serious researchers, and many archives, that's their audience. They don't want a casual casual crew. Then it's still worthwhile to put a link to your archives in relevant Wikipedia articles. But just yeah. know that you're, it's a different scale. If it's accessible on the phone, that's completely different from, it takes a few clicks and a registration to get in the archives. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and it actually feeds into another question that just came through. Um, sure. Sorry to throw you off here. Um, are there any rules or community ethic ethics questions regarding college or university folks editing or creating articles that relate to their own institutions? We, so the, we prefer, we don't want marketing and branding in Wikipedia. And I've got to tell you, there's just not an audience out there that's enthusiastic for pop culture information about professors or CEOs or, uh, People in people in general, unless you're a celebrity or in a movie, uh, we have a, a tremendous flood of of especially business people making their profiles in Wikipedia. We want professors, but we want professors from a certain perspective. We really don't want what professors say about themselves. We'd really like what other people say about professors and research. And it's the same with with universities. It's the same with any organization. Just in general. We, we don't want the organization's self-published material, their marketing material, their branding bylines, but we really want third-party neutral journalism or reviews or critiques about all these organizations. And organizations have, have mixed feelings about this. Um, a lot of them misjudge how much third-party press they get. I can tell you there's, there's a lot of research institutes in the world that maybe have a budget of 10 million, 100 million, maybe a, a billion dollars a year. I know medical organizations that go through a billion dollars a year and don't attract a single piece of journalism in most years, despite consuming that amount of money. Uh, and it, it's not that journalism's not coming out, it's just all they're all press releases that are published exactly in other websites. We have different biases in Wikipedia, like um, it's often said that it, it's the truth. So we've got about um, nearly 2 million biographies in Wikipedia. In English, 80% of those are male. So there's this, this tremendous bias against, against women, for example. And we're, we're still, sort. there's a lot of reasons for this. There's, I, and I'm not going to be able to sort this out. But among the many reasons why this is happening is in external media, definitely. Um, it's not Wikipedia, but just if you're a man, you're more likely to be interviewed, featured, profiled, critiqued, whatever. And if we, do, if we don't have anything to cite about uh, a demographic or a person, then we're, we're not publishing press releases. Like we really need, we, we need something to cite for quality control. And if there's nothing to cite, we don't even put the content into Wikipedia. So to put that a different way, it's not so much that um, there's ethical considerations for institutions doing it themselves. It's more what they're citing and what they're, what they're writing rather than who is writing. That's exactly, that's exactly the okay. issue. That's exactly the issue. And, and people who, who write about themselves or organizations that write about themselves, they're exceedingly likely to not be able to hear or comprehend that they shouldn't cite their own website and press releases. But if, if, if there was some unicorn out there who could manage to do it properly and cite everything, including the criticism about themselves, 
uh, we that's you know we're we're looking for good content at Wiki. All right. That makes so, sense. Last mm -hmm. thing uh, organizations do in Wikipedia. So I've said they're trying to get page views. They do some archiving. They they build up some community. This has nothing to do with Wiki. This is taking content out of Wiki and doing it off Wiki. And I'm not saying this is a majority use, but it definitely happens. I'm going to give some examples. So Metropolitan Museum of Art, very generous of them, right, to give those 300,000 images. Actually, to some extent, they didn't want to clean up the metadata. And when they put those images in Wikipedia, the community started cleaning up the metadata about their collection, finding errors, misspellings, uh, putting topic tags to label what is the, the the subject matter content, what's depicted in all these pictures. So we were we were also cleaning up their archives. People were willingly doing this, and they they pulled that data back out and they used it to enrich their own database. Uh, Welcome Trust. It's not like they were exactly looking for people to improve medical products, but when they put this history of medicine cultural content out. One of the things that I've worked on and some other people have worked on is the better structuring of data about clinical trials and connecting this with different kinds of cultural or advertising products associated with different drugs or pharma companies. So it's not that they, the donor of the media did this, but it certainly went into uh, an environment where there's a lot of people looking at all kinds of, of medical uh, data and people foster this kind of thing. There's something called the, the SNAC database. My university participates in this. It's a consortium of different archival collections that, that point at each other. If one collection has, a, has information, it can share it with another, it, it's a hub. But something that this database didn't have for, it, it, there's profiles of biographies, pro, uh, there's biographies, profiles of organizations, all these kinds of content. The database itself didn't have a lot of images. And there was uh, an experiment in this database where they were looking for, hey, Wikipedia, we have this list of people. Do you have images in the public domain that we could integrate with the database? And so this particular database, it actually gave, gave to the Wiki ecosystem, but it, it pulled some things back out, sometimes birthdays, sometimes other, other, other bits of data, and, and especially pictures. And this isn't associated with any particular organization, but organizations that are doing mapping of any kind uh, if they're looking for free mapping data, often they'll get it from something called OpenStreetMap, not necessarily related to Wiki, except that it's another free and open media project. But if OpenStreetMap, for example, is mapping out a museum, they don't want to talk about the text of the museum or what, that, that's general reference, that's Wikipedia's domain. So Wikipedia points to OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap points to Wikipedia, and organizations that are also doing mapping of any kind they may pull from from both of these projects that it all kind of supports each other in, in a non -profit, non profit collaborative framework. All right, so now I'm going to talk about libraries, like particular projects in libraries. Uh, I would take questions. So if you have questions about any aspect of this, you know, slow me down, put them in the chat. Let's talk it through. But Wikipedia loves libraries. Of course, Wikipedia does because we have to cite things. Wikipedia doesn't have any content. I, I've told you that we have to, we're not doing original research. We're not making up things. Wikipedia is not what people have in their heads. Wikipedia is what experts have written and what we're able to cite. So what we'd like to do in Wikipedia, we have, we have all these people looking for information and how we want to serve this need is making sure that they find the best information in the world. We're looking for the best information on every, every topic to, to cite. We want to make this as easy as possible. And we're, we're big on accessibility, things like translation, web accessibility, making sure it looks good on your phone. Uh, what we, we really don't wanna do in Wikipedia is localization of the, of, of the knowledge or replacing of the communities. We feel like libraries are, are the place where local knowledge should be stored and where, where people should organize. You, you have to have local, uh, local, local stakeholders, people who actually own the information to be able to manage it. And it's, it's just Wikipedia's duty to, to summarize, not to sort this out. There are precedents of, of libraries hiring Wikipedians. Uh, for some years, the Wiki community in New York City has, has met at uh, Metropolitan, Libra Metropolitan Library Council of New York. I, I forget what it's called, Metro, <laughs> Metro. And they, they, hired a, they hired a Wikipedian to support libraries for a couple of years. This was 
I think in around 2015. Uh, they, they gave an experiment with it. There was a lot of other wiki ac activity happening in New York City. So they don't have a Wikipedia right now, but they've still been hosting Wikipedia events, or they did before COVID at least. Uh, OCLC, they've employed several Wikipedians over the years. They do a lot of reconciliation of Wikipedia's articles with their uh, authority control VF identifier. That, that's been one of the things. A lot of universities have hired Wikipedians. The Bodleian, the library at Oxford is just, it was a, it was a well-presented example if anybody wants to read a case study of how that ha happened. Uh, of course, I'm at the University of Virginia. It's, they're, they're very similar. When a Wikipedia is at a university, it's a, it's a certain experience that they have. And just this week, in the Kansas City Public Library, they hired their Wikipedia full-time for a one-year term to do outreach to the community and to, to share, share their information. So if you wanna look up any of these cases, that's a possibility I could, I could talk more about any of them, but uh, I'm gonna talk about my own university, what we're, we're doing at my university and in my library. So if a Wikipedia is associated with the library, one of the first things that usually comes up is how do you surface special collections? And at this point, I, I guess you guys would have an idea about that. You look in the special collections, you integrate whatever you can, text, facts, images, into Wikipedia articles that are relevant, and then and then you sh you showcase these, you count the views. You can also do these kind of classroom programs. I already told you about one of them. Students come in and and they learn what is a reliable source. Wikipedia is good for teaching this because it's peer review. Someone puts their content into Wikipedia, and an experience that consistently comes up is some student is going to get a warning. It's not a warning. It, it seems like a warning. They get scared. They're going to get friendly advice from a Wikipedia reviewer. And they're going to say, hey, this, this source doesn't look so reliable, or I can't seem to find the source you're citing. Can you help me find it? And what the Wiki community is doing is, is saying, check your references. And so that's a nice experience. It's a very, very common reason why teachers and professors would, would introduce students to Wikipedia. Or, or this thing, especially at universities, the scholarly profiles. So I told you we're not so keen on Wikipedia articles about professors because they tend to self-cite the university, self-published materials. It's not that we don't want them, we just want appropriate ones. But something that we, we really do want in Wiki and that is access, ex, acceptable, this isn't really what the professor wants, but not, it's what the Wiki community wants. We want scholarly metadata. We want biographical data to index these people. Author disambiguation. We do a lot of manipulation of catalogs of source metadata and we try to associate people with their, their publications, especially in the academic literature. So I'm gonna say some things about this. So special collections at the library, we, we, we've had a few different projects. Uh, one is looking at old archival newspapers, pulling out, I'm in Charlottesville, by the way, Charlottesville, Virginia. This is known for some, some mass insanity that, that's happened in, in different times. In the, in, the, in the civil rights era, Charlottesville had a lot of activism. And we've got these newspapers on uh, uh, black, black activism in, in the civil rights area. And it's, it's crazy to bring these newspapers out and show them to students. Tell them, hey, did you know that there used to be a black hospital and a white hospital and you had to go to the one for your race. And if you didn't like that, there was a black lawyer and a white lawyer and you couldn't go to the lawyer that isn't associated with your race, just all this insanity in these archives and you, you pull this stuff out and have the have the students edit it and it makes it a lot more real to see something that's that's older and then they can actually do something with it have these kinds of conversations cite the sources uh so special collections in charlottesville we we talk a lot about race i was saying something that's kind of low impact so we have this this activist his name is julian bond he's a, an activist of the civil rights era we happen to hold his archives at our university copyrighted material not appropriate for integration into Wikipedia, which is a free and open project and requires open copyright licenses for things. But we are able to at least link to his archives in his biography. And that's not going to be high impact, but also it's what's appropriate for a Wikipedia article. If somebody's researching this guy, they need to know who's holding his archives and where do I, where do I find more materials? So it's the, the least that we can do. It's just a hyperlink in, in an article in the external link section. But it still matters because the article would be incomplete without it, right? If you're going to be talking about this guy and here's the biography of his life, 
you need to link to his archives. It's just appropriate, of course you do. So some library activities there. I've got different undergraduates classes that have edited. Uh, I've got links to all of these. I'm not gonna click any of these now except by request, but just like I showed you class editing before, there's tracking after tracking after tracking of, of so many universities all around the world of what different students are doing or what different cohorts are doing in different places. Now, I'm getting to the getting to the point where I'm going to be like pressing you guys and more actively soliciting questions. But I want to I want to give an example of a typical thing that happens at a university that it's just kind of a bonkers situation, and it, it comes up in so many circumstances. And what I say is, no matter what happens almost no matter what happens, there's a way to connect it to community editing in Wikipedia. I'm in the School of Data Science. I'm gonna describe a typical project. So we've got, we've got this researcher who works with hardware. He works with thousands of sensors, uh, environmental sensors. And these things, these do things like check the, you, you set these cheap little devices up in a place, spread them around a city or a forest, they take the temperature, they take the humidity, air pressure, count particulate matter, how much dust is in the air. I don't know what else they do. They, they sense everything that a sensor can do. It's a little device. And you need these sensors around to get a survey of climate change, the effects of climate change around the world. So this is a popular sort of research to do. This particular research project sponsored by the US government is supposed to do it in Alaska. And we're supposed to do it in a community with a high indigenous population that uses a language other than English, an indigenous tribal language. And uh, they, have, they have their own lives, they're doing their own thing, and they, they may not necessarily uh, particularly care for a lot of people from outside coming in to set up sensors. So how do you, how do, you do community outreach in this, in this kind of circumstance? Well, actually, you know, it, it's hard. You can't do proper community outreach without representation. I'm not going to say Wiki is definitely not going to solve your problems, but if you don't know where else to start, in Wikipedia, some of the things that we were able to look at were, well, we can we can map out the area. We can we can write, make sure that there's good Wikipedia articles on the history of the different places in the region. We can make a list of all the animals and plants that live in the area and see if we can get photographs of all of them, Wikipedia articles for all of them. And then we have a list of the wildlife in the area. We can track the rivers, the natural bodies of water. What is their historical significance? What, what do we know about them? Uh, we can talk about the art and culture and that's contemporary. If there's artists that need biographies nowadays, then we can make artist biographies for whoever is important in the community now. We can host Wikipedia editing events with the local community in this way. We can look at historic art and we take what we can get. A lot of this is loot, loot in a museum that's not in the local community anymore, but such as it is, if we have pictures and it's about the community and about the culture, we do the best that we can. What, what, what are we supposed to do? And we can even do this in the local languages. So if somebody wants to do language preservation or somebody wants to try to do translation, then it's certainly within the realm of possibility to make these Wikipedia articles and this information in the local language. Wikipedia accepts input in all kinds of languages, translate across languages, and do the best we can. This is not community buy-in. This is, this is, what this is is better than nothing. So if somebody needs to do a community project, I, I, I'm, I'm showing this to demonstrate that no matter what someone wants to talk about, and if you go to a town and you talk about environmental sensors, and then somebody wants to talk about the local cultural festival. If you're just a data scientist or an environmental scientist, you may be caught off guard. But if you have some idea of, well, okay, we're gonna do some, we're gonna try climate change in Wikipedia and we can also put this other information in Wikipedia and we're gonna connect it all and present it all together. Uh, we ran through a um, collection of um, artworks. Uh, the, the Met gave us so many, but other museums have. And this is the kind of curation you can do when you have a media collection and open archives. So I, I don't think there's any museum that's ever curated the exhibit on paintings which contain an iceberg. But we have these, these systems in Wikipedia where you can, if you, if you have topic tags of paintings, you can run queries 
we have a we have a web-based query service for querying Wikipedia, these media collections, all this stuff. I, I'm just going to show a bit of computer code and what comes up. So this is show me dear Wikipedia. Show me an instance of an instance of a painting. Okay, and it's got to depict an iceberg. And the, the people who, who put these labels on the icebergs, this is crowdsourced labels on these icebergs. So we have we have some 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 image, right? And somebody somebody helped curate this to say what, what did it contain? They applied structured data to this thing. The last thing I'm gonna say before I, I really insist on questions is I, I do a lot of scholarly profiling at my university. So I said, Wikipedia articles are off topic. Usually I, I don't touch those, but I definitely do the metadata of people. So I say, I get the researcher profile. I try to track, import the list of uh, from Crossref and, and other sources, scholarly, scholarly indexes. What is the list of their publications? to try to do different kinds of data visualizations and, and understand what it is people are writing about at my university and what relationship do they have with other people at other universities. So you can do all the other classic things. Well, who are the author networks? Who is out of the author network? Who are the clicks? Like this group will write papers on this type subject with this group, but what do you know? They don't wanna work with that group. What's up with that? You know, and what kind of papers come out of these, these different social networks or show me on a map who's publishing the most papers on a given topic. In the same way that you can tag a painting as depicting an iceberg, you can also tag an, an academic paper as having the main subject of, of an iceberg. And that query is just the same way. If you can query about paintings, you can query about academic papers. We're trying to replicate Google Scholar, you could say, in just a, fr a free and open version of this. And for this to work, it's not like we at the University of Virginia are gonna sort all the papers for every university in the world we're expecting every university to sort their own papers. You got to come up with your own list of faculty. And you as librarians, you probably already know this, but this gets a surprise out of some other people. Did you know that most universities don't even know who they're employing? Like if you ask a university, give me a list of all your professors, they can't do that. And if you tell them, give me a list of all the papers you published the last year, they'll really tell you you're crazy because there's no way they can do that. So if this is going to be done, it's going to be done with free and open data, and there's going to be a certain amount of crowdsourcing. I'm going to stop here. You guys have to ask questions at this point. There, there are some questions. You were just on a good roll. I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, one question came in. If a library has a collection with metadata records, can they be submitted directly to Wiki, or, do they, or does it have to be to, on a platform like New York Heritage? You can be both. Uh, so... There's going to be, so the thing is that Wikipedia, it's Wikidata is what we're talking about. So there's different platforms. Wikipedia is what's most familiar and most accessible. We have something called Wikidata, which is a structured data complement that's kind of separate from Wikipedia, but very, very integrated. The thing about Wikidata is it doesn't accept data set imports, not raw data set imports. Everything has to be mapped. So like, for example, we have a property in, in Wikipedia for author, and it's got a map to your concept of, of author. And depending on the, the kind of collection you have, somebody, it may be appropriate to say author, it may be appropriate to say creator or painter or something else, and it may not map one to one. And so somebody's got to make a decision for this collection, how should it map into, into Wikidata? The advantages of mapping into Wikidata, what most people want is some kind of introduction to the linked open data cloud or the semantic web. If you put your stuff into Wikidata, it's definitely going to get slurped up by Google and other people. And they also want to play around, can I distribute more of my stuff through, through Wikipedia? I would say for any organization that wants to do this, don't think about importing an entire data set. Think about starting with a few representative models and just manually edit things before you start automating things and see how Wiki is going to work for you and think more about what I said your goals are. Do you want to just archive your data set? Are you actually looking for page views? Are you trying to get some crowdsourcing and community around this? What do you want? So play, play around with it before you start thinking about doing it at scale. And I, I'm gonna answer this a little bit from, from my perspective as a, uh, from a New York Heritage perspective. So um, Wikidata um, can handle hosting of the images. So it's not like you, like we used to um, participate in DPLA, the Digital Public Library of America, and they didn't do any of the hosting themselves. They would do a 
metadata, they would have metadata records that would refer back to a repository. Wikidata isn't like that. Wikidata can host the image and the metadata. It just needs to be crosswalk, need to be put into the right format so that it fits within the parameters that Wikidata is looking for. Is that accurate, Lane? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's how I would uh, you know say it from uh, from our perspective. So yeah, I, I think it could be in both, but um, you, know, you, you always have that crosswalk issue of is creator or is it author or you know, and then there's some things that are less even less uh, straightforward than that. So it can be a lot of work. Uh, there was another question. Um, what is the timeline for community review? If a student creates new entries, like the artist biographies you mentioned, can they see the result of the process before the end of the semester? Not if they submit it on the last day, which is what most students do. So we 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 have this we have this training guide. So if, if you want to do this, there's there's an organization called the Wiki Education Foundation, and if you go through them, they'll actually get a they'll give you online training. And they'll appoint an actual human to make sure that you meet your goals. A human that will talk to you on the phone or by email or whatever will help you meet your goals. But in in short, uh, the wiki communities, 90% of the time, they're going to give their feedback within one week. And like 70% of the time, it happens within one day. So when it, when it takes longer, the, the first round of review is to see uh, it's by the, the general feed, not subject matter experts in Wiki, where they're just seeing, does this citation or the source being cited look legitimate? That's, and is there a swear word in it? So if there's no swear word in it and the citation looks legitimate, then it passes to the second round of review. And the second round of review, it can take longer depending on how many people there are in the community. I'll give you an example. So if it's a medical article, it gets kicked in the medical community and they're really good about reviewing everything that comes in within a day. They, they almost always get everything in a day. I ha had a complaint uh, today, said, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, you're wrong. I, there was wrong information about the Catholic Church in Armenia. So we do have a Catholic Church review squad, and we do have a review squad for all things Armenia. But actually, I, I know what's going on. The Armenian, <laughs> poor Armenian reviewers, they're, they're flooded with a bunch of Turkish stuff right now. Uh, because of U.S. politics, and that's probably why why this error slipped through and why the person was editing this anyway. So it, it, it's just some communities, fact-checking communities are larger than others. We kick everything to them, but if, if, if students can please, and it's not just about, excuse me, not just about submitting a week in advance, submit a week in advance, and then also after that, give another week for the student to respond to the feedback and actually correct what was wrong, if anything. Two weeks in advance, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's uh, that's actually a lot faster than I would have expected. I would, you know, in my mind, I think like, okay, if it's a page that's not viewed very often or not really like kind of in the outer reaches of Wikipedia, that it probably wouldn't um, get get a response. But there's a there's a system in place. It sounds like for getting that review happening on a more uh, regular basis. Is that accurate? You you, you want to do some review right now? Let's do some review right now. <laughs> Okay, so there's many review tools in Wikipedia. Uh, so I just pulled this up. Here's one of the review tools. Left side of the screen is before, right side of the screen is after. I'm not even sure what's going on here. So this is just like something, somebody edited this. And here we have a Japanese army officer. Okay, so uh, he was on his way from Beijing to Xinjiang ordering to blown up of his train. Okay. So it looks like what we have here is just someone having trouble translating English because this doesn't make sense. And so uh, devising a scheme to detonate some train. So I don't know who this guy is. He's in the army. I don't know anything about detonation of this train. I, I don't want to get involved in these politics, but I can tell bad English grammar on the left side before and somebody corrected it on the right side. So I'm going to say this looks good. OK, and if I could have done that in five seconds, you know, I would have. OK, so here's someone else. Uh, this this was just edited seconds ago. Uh, some Islamic scholar, I, uh, 1703. Well, okay. Uh, he killed the man and enslaved their children. I have no idea. Arrested. He arrested the women and children. You know, but I I know a lot. Let's see. I'm going to say I don't know. So somebody would have to check the original source. This can go to an expert community. I don't want to be involved in this one. How about that? Okay, here's, here's another one. 
Okay, this one's easy. Okay, what's happening here is I see a sentence and a citation and somebody has removed it without an explanation. The citations to uh, a case study in a journal, I don't know about this, but I know that if you're removing information with a citation to an academic journal, you should, you should, you should give an explanation. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag this one, it should revert and somebody's gonna double check that. So there we go, that's- Yeah, that, that was awesome. So, I mean, it, it, it's probably also evolved over the years in terms of how, um, how you were able to just go through and sit down and review things, whereas before it might've been more like as you stumble across, across things, right? So some, somebody, some people are clicking through Instagram on their phone and some people are clicking through wiki fact checking on their phone. So it's just like, this is what yeah. you do when you're passing time. Um, I don't, I'm not seeing any other questions, but I, I have a question for you that might be a good way to kind of wrap up. Um, I, so just like, this kind of gets to um, the point I was just making. Um, I feel like perceptions of Wikipedia in terms of its reliability have, have shifted over the last two years, after the last, over the last like decade or so. It used to be kind of a punchline, like, oh, I read that on Wikipedia. Anybody can edit Wikipedia. It's probably, it may or may not be true. Um, but now I feel um, there's a growing feeling of Wikipedia being a, a, a reliable and, and trusted resource not necessarily in every moment and not not on every occasion, but just in the aggregate. And I'm wondering um, your thoughts on that and whether you you feel like there has been a change in perception. There's been a change in perception, but there's never been a, a change in Wikipedia's quality control process. So from the very beginning, we've said if somebody adds a fact, you should have a citation. That's the foundation of Wikipedia, this idea of citing the best available sources that anyone's able to identify. Uh, we, we talk about incidental details and, and social issues from time to time. And of course, we want more diversity in the representation. Wikipedia has, has different institutional biases that often reflect the, the biases of privilege in society. We're certainly underrepresented for content in the uh, lower and middle income countries. I'd say that's the biggest gap that, that, that I would point to is underrepresentation outside of English language and in lower middle in, income countries. But it's a, it's a community of very passionate activists who believe strongly in access to quality information and who have always been adamant that we look to scholarship as the source of shared objective ob, objective truth and that there is a shared objective truth by the way like that's i didn't think that that was an active activist position but evidently it is uh, so there is such a thing as objective truth and uh, I'm glad that it's not that we want people to uh, necessarily be so enthusiastic about Wikipedia, but we do feel strongly you shouldn't criticize the mission, like this th this goal. Who who else has ever said we're gonna we're gonna get all the information in the world, we're gonna provide it to everyone in the world in every language, and we're gonna do it for free. So if you if you have complaints about the quality, that's fine. Please bring the criticism out, but just please don't criticize the mission. Goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that, I think that's a great way of putting it. Um, you know, the the goal has always been noble. It's it's how um, successful it's being. And I, I've seen a couple of comments in the in the chat, like you know whether um, you know some some teachers or, or you know college professors might you know caution their students about going to Wikipedia. But Wikipedia can be a first place you go and you look you 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 practice good um, information literacy and look for. Your, what sources are being cited. And I think there's a lot of um, really positive uh, aspects of that and that, that's kind of filtered back into culture and how, how uh, you know, you, you take things for granted about absolute truth versus, you know, uh, alternative facts or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, I think there's there's a, a lot to be said for the, the how noble that mission is and how, um, how surprisingly effective Wikipedia has been in and realizing those goals, and uh, you know, I think it's one of the one of the golden places of the internet where where you know you read, especially lately, about all the issues happening in all these other corners of the internet, and, and Wikipedia's um, generally been been this very positive um, organization. So. I hope so. I hope more every year. 
All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions coming through, and we're, we're to the top of the hour here. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, stop here. I'm going to put in the chat window now a link to a Google form where we're going to be having a second um, session with Lane that's going to be a lot more hands-on. Unfortunately, because it is hands-on, there will only be 10 slots available. So we're asking people to fill out that form and just kind of say why you're interested. And uh, that way we can ensure that we can get people from all over the state and that um, you know uh, we have some equity in terms of um, access to that, uh, that workshop. Um, but thank you so much, Lane. This has been very interesting. And uh, um, I appreciate you sharing all your insights and your experience with us. Thank you all for spending your Friday afternoon with me. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll hopefully see many of you at other ESLN uh, workshops and webinars. And Lane, we'll see you at the next, uh, next event coming up in a month or so, or a couple of weeks. Bye, everyone.